All right, what's going on? So I am getting up bright and early in the morning, before daylight actually, gonna drive a little ways and go fishing. Haven't been fishing in probably a week, over a week, probably. Have not been fishing since, what day is it? Hunter? The 27th. 27th, probably haven't been fishing since the 2019th. And you're itching. I'm itching, itching to go fishing. But we've been out here at the shop actually tinkering around quite a bit lately. Got me some uh, little rubber skirted jigs tied up on the old ace head. Got me a black and blue one or two tied up. Got some stuff ready, a little bit of rubber. And you know, there's a couple things that I always look for, probably two or three main concepts that I always look for just about every single bait that I really throw. You know, whether it be vibrating jigs, crankbaits, everything is kind of goes hand in hand. It's like a couple key principles that I always try to key in on. Number one is your hook. Your sharp hooks, obviously, number one. I use Gamakatsu. That's what I have the most confidence in. But the biggest thing is how the hook actually relates to the bait. So, you know, I'm out here tinkering with crankbaits all the time. Always messing around with a bunch of crankbaits constantly. I've got boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of crankbaits. I probably have more crankbaits than I have caught bass on crankbaits. What do you think, Hunter? You think so? I've caught a lot of bass on crankbaits, though. A lot of them. Still got more crankbaits? I have heaps probably. of crankbaits. But here's the deal. Probably some that will never see the water. Some that will never see the water, there's no doubt. But the deal is, I've got a lot of confidence in a couple of different types of crankbaits. And I just throw them, throw them, throw them, throw them. Then something new will come out and I'll have to order them. You know, we all do it. Everybody does it. I'll order me five or six of a uh, new bait that comes out. And then if I get five or six of them, well, there's like four good colors I like and I gotta get three of every color. So now all of a sudden I've got 12 and then, you know, but hey, they make a medium diver too. So I gotta get two of every color now I like. So now all of a sudden I've got 20. And then all of a sudden I gotta have me an entire Gamakatsu box absolutely full of crankbaits, which is not what this is. These are actually frogs. That, so, that ultra receipt's not looking too bad now, is it? No, it still looks pretty bad. Oh, it does. Yeah, it still looks pretty rough. But anyways, these principles kind of carry over from one to the other. You know, like, I change crankbait treble hooks religiously. The good thing about, so, so, you know, some brands come with good hooks, some don't. But the good thing about, you know, I'm lucky enough to be sponsored by Gamakatsu, but this right here is the treble hook that I like the absolute most. You can see my little handwriting right there. It's not very good, but this is the G Finesse treble, and that's kind of how I store them right there. I'm out. You can see over here, I am completely out of the size that I throw the most, which is a five. A number five is the one that I like the most in this treble hook, and it's what I use for a lot of DT6s, you know, a lot of small square bills, little johns, all that type of stuff. I use the number five size treble hook on front and back and some of my homemade balsa baits I have that's why I throw the most so I'm completely out of them and there's a reason for that I had like this row this row and this row absolutely full at the beginning of this year and now I'm out because I change treble hooks religiously I feel like I have a lot of confidence whenever I'm cranking that I'm gonna land most of the fish that bite yeah sometimes they're gonna jump off sometimes you're gonna lose them and you know that's just how it goes whenever you're fishing with any type of a bait but especially a treble hook bait but I still have a ton of confidence that I'm gonna land them because of the hooks that I use. So changing treble hooks is always extremely, extremely important. But I'm gonna show y'all a tip right now to pay attention to in case you're gonna change treble hooks, you know, on your own and all your baits, all that type of stuff. You can see right here on the bottom of this, of this crankbait. If you can see, that treble hook is laying perfectly streamlined between the split ring and then the eye of the hook is right here. And then the treble hook lays effortlessly on the bottom of the hook. If I had that crankbait hook turned exactly 180 degrees, the treble hook would still have the loop on the same size, but the third treble hook that's sticking out would be pressing into the body of the, of the actual bait. And what that would make is that treble hook is never going to lay perfectly against the body. It's always gonna be in a little bit of a bind. So I was gonna have that split ring in a bind. I was gonna have that treble hook in a little bit of a bind. And then you're also gonna have two hooks sticking off to the side and they're not gonna stick out quite as far if you know a fish does bite it. It's not gonna have quite as much clearance below the actual bill of the treble hook. So if you have two of them sticking out sideways, they're not gonna have quite as much away from the body. And then always on my treble hooks, I always try to put the back treble hook 
See if I can get this on there. I always try to do it about exactly the same and then have one treble hook sticking up. That's what I always do. I seem like, you know, a lot of times you'll have fish, you're fighting one crankbait and you'll see them come up and you're like, oh, they barely got it. They got one hook. But if they get that one hook in the roof of their, uh, right through the roof of their nose, right through their snout, whatever you want to call it, that seems to be a super high landing percentage fish for me. So I always put that treble hook on back, facing up, and I also feel like it gets hung just a little bit less when it's like that. But that's not the biggest determinant for that. But that's the way that I always set up treble hooks. And every crankbait kind of has the hardware turned a little bit differently. And you kind of got to scale it for whatever you've got. Like some are turned the exact opposite way. Some are putting a perfect line down the bait of the hook vertically. Some are horizontally across the bait. And you just kind of got to play it by ear and see which way the treble hook fits the most effortlessly. Because that's going to make it have the best action in the water. So, Do they come stock like that? Typically, almost all of them come stock like that. Like, I get tons of crankbaits in from, you know, sponsors or whatever, off, you know, shop cars, whenever I shop there, all that type of stuff. I get crankbaits in all the time. And 90% of the time, both treble hooks turn perfectly. Like, they're exactly how they're supposed to be. But every once in a while, you'll see one, and whenever, after you've done it for a while and you know what to look for, you'll see one that kind of sticks out to you. And you'll say, hey, that's not right. And it'll be straight out of the box, straight from the factory, straight from, you know, the supplier, and it'll be turned just a little bit. You know, that's how it came from the factory. So, you know, when somebody, maybe a machine puts them on, maybe a person puts them on my hand. I really don't know how they do it in, in, in the factory, but more times than not, they're rigged up right. Every once in a while, you'll see one that's rigged up a little bit wrong. So I always turn it, I always get it going the way that I like to have it going. And it's not near as important on extremely hard thumping baits. Baits that create a ton of vibration on their own seems to not be as important. But when you have some of these more subtle cold water crankbaits, you know, like any of these flat sides or anything like that, those are the ones where it's the most important to have everything super streamlined because you don't want anything off whenever it's coming through the water. So it hurts your depth, it hurts the action of the bait, it hurts a lot of things, and a lot of times it'll hurt how, how well you hook the fish. So that's my crankbait tip that I've been going through for a lot. You know, I've caught a couple recently. Some that even I've put on, you know, I, they've got aftermarket tri trip hooks on them. So I know that I put them on myself and won't be turned perfectly. So I know I make the mistake. I see them from the factory sometimes. That's just one thing to look out for. Another thing to pay attention to is whenever you're throwing frogs, and it's not really the time of year to throw frogs, but man, they are fun to talk about and they're fun to think about. And it's fun to go watch old YouTube videos that I posted that have some frog fishing going on. So. Frogs come out of the pack perfectly weedless. That's what they do. Like you can run your fingers all down the side. What I'll do is I'll just grab a trusty pair of pliers and I'll grab the hook right here in front of the leg, just like that. And I'll just bend that hook away from the body. That's what I do on both sides. I actually bend that hook out from the body. Just give a little bit of clearance on both sides. Now, if you're fishing in very heavy vegetation, this is gonna be, you wanna minimize how much you bend it, but I still do bend it just a little bit. So in open water i bend them probably eighth of an inch away from the body in heavy cover i just bend it just enough to where it catches my fingers whenever i go rub it down the side of the frog so you can see frogs are designed to be weedless i bend them out that's just something that i do that's kind of the biggest tips that i can give anybody is pay attention to exactly the fundamentals of how the hook is going to hook a bass and what that bait does in a bass's mouth because you know I've got a wall of salt plastics behind me. Way too many. Way more than you ever need. Way more colors than you'll ever need. But guess what? Color's not that important. You gotta get a baseline of <clears throat> the certain type of fours that you're imitating. You gotta get a baseline of that. So you want black and blues. You may want a couple reds in a certain colors. You want some green pumpkins. You want some pearls. That's about as far as it goes. And the reds, they only bite them for about two months out of the year, seems like. So they will bite them all the time, actually. They'll bite red all year round. But there's a couple times, a couple months out of the year where they seem to really favor it. But other than that, it's all about clarity. How well can the fish see the bait? So I don't have a top secret color that catches them better for me than anything else because I don't believe in it. I just throw what I feel like the fish can see the best in the environment that they're in. And the environment being watercolor, visibility in the actual cover that they're in. And then, you know, the time of year kind of dictates it a little bit. Usually in the summer, bluegill are more light colored, all that type of stuff. I seem to lean on green pumpkin a little bit more in the winter time. Seems like the fish can't see quite as well. So I go a little bit darker, a little bit more black and blues, a little bit more chartreuse, a little more reds, all that type of stuff, a little bit more bright whites. 
all that type of stuff whenever they are winter time where the sun's not hitting the earth at the exact same angle there's not as much light penetration in the water so i'd use a little bit of colors that are easier for them to see so as far when, as when he says color doesn't matter he means like the variations of green pumpkin and the variations of black and blue he doesn't mean that like you need one black and blue color you need one green pumpkin he doesn't mean that like that color doesn't matter just the, all the different variations with like the different yeah. flakes yep. and specks and like the green belly like yeah. that that's what doesn't matter. not a big believer in you need green pumpkin blue or green pumpkin purple or green pumpkin whatever you want to call it whatever the colors they are green pumpkin magic i just think that you need something in that ballpark you need a black and blue in that ballpark and then you need a white that's about it that's about all you need i keep three colors in the boat literally of every bait that i keep so see what else we're going through find a little something else to talk about another thing that i do religiously is i trim skirts you know this is a jackhammer chatterbait no secret to it this one has caught a bass or two i have knocked the eyeball straight off of this thing and you know that's going to happen whenever you're skipping docks and whenever you hit a post every now and then or hit a boat lift or something sorry to all you dock owners on the local lakes but i have been beating y'all stuff up for the past two months but anyways this is kind of just how i want to imitate a profile so you can see i'm trying to kind of match some three and a half three to three and a half inch thread fin you see i trimmed the skirt down right below the hook about a quarter inch below the hook and i actually took the trailer that i'm throwing which is just a little swim bait trailer and i cut about a quarter maybe maybe a half probably a half inch off the tip of this the head of this thing and made it you know just a three inch swim bait on the back of this chatterbait so i mean that's Kind of one of the things I do a lot, I do it with jigs. You know, if I, I know if I want to throw a, a junior size chunk or if I want to throw a full size chunk, I'll completely change how long I leave the skirt, how, how short I trim it below the hook, all that type of stuff. It also depends on if I'm fishing for a lot of spotted bass. I'm gonna trim stuff, I'm gonna kind of shrink it down some. One of the main reasons why that chatterbait had a smaller trailer, had a smaller skirt. I was fishing on a lake that had a lot of really nice size spotted bass in it. So I want to make sure that I had something that those fish could get really well and also could still draw a big large amount in. So I trim skirts down a lot. I match it to the trailer a ton. I spend a lot of time, you know, making sure the baits are absolutely dialed in. So I'll show you all something else that is actually a little bit of a newer bait. This is a new one from Yami Katsu, which, you know, you can tell. I'm about to pull out actually that's a gamakatsu i'm gonna pull out actually a more of a one of a competitor's hook and show y'all kind of one of the things that i look for okay so here is a competitor's hook you can see that hook point is pointed let's get it let's get it focused in that hook point is pointed almost directly at that line tie let me show y'all the new one from Gamakatsu. This is what makes me favor some things over the other. And you know, if the uh, if the competitor's product was better, I would just use it. I may not say it out loud, but I would use it. So you can see how much higher, how much elevated that hook point is above that line tie. All that does is, and obviously this is a you know swim bait hook with a blade hanging off the back of. I think it's called a spring lock spinner. Is what it's called, I believe. But you can see how much more clearance, how much more gap you have on that hook you know so whenever you're trying to dial in the hooks you want to use the baits you want to use that's the main thing the main thing that i pay attention to is how much clearance i have how much gap i have the way that hook is going to penetrate that fish's mouth so that's one of the biggest keys i can tell y'all look for is look at the difference in those two hooks and it's one brand is not always superior every once in a while there'll be a different brand that is really good at one thing they have one technique that they really specialize in they got they got the best setup for it and be another brand where you know they got the best setup for something so kind of shop around look around and try to find the best hook for every single application but that right there is why that new you know underspin style screw lock weedless underspin that i've been throwing is the new one that i actually didn't have any a, a year ago but now i've been throwing a ton because i've had way better hookups i have not been losing near me fish i used to lose a ton of fish on those types of baits and now i just don't seem to so let's see so i was talking about treble hooks how i'm completely out of treble hooks and a good reason for that is i've been throwing jerk baits a ton recently been throwing a bunch of different kinds a bunch of different brands all that stuff but jerk baits take three treble hooks and whenever you throw them g finesse it gets a little expensive there's a bunch of them on there three treble hooks hanging off that sucker but it's definitely worth it whenever you land most of the fish that bites so 
lots of different let's see if I can find one right here I can find one with the G finesses on it yep here's one this is the this is an exact jerk bait that I've been throwing this off season actually actually weighed in a couple really nice ones on this thing not long ago so there it is with the G finesses on it boom sticky sharp one one of them was a really nice spotted bass close to a three pounder actually had it hooked behind the head and you know that's usually torture when you've got a spotted bass that fights like crazy hard to land them but land them on this thing so super impressed with them hooks <clears throat> what else we got hunter what other kind of stuff we got to talk about what you want to see i think, I think you did it pretty good did a pretty good job we've been out here just organizing you know trying to take care of stuff you can see how my g box is down there just got them absolutely loaded with stuff the basic thing i wanted everybody to know is just because you buy from a store doesn't mean you can't change it oh so what she wanted to do with this video is like five or six modifications for baits and that's one thing so i'll show you one, one thing that i do sometimes on most jigs uh, you don't really have to do it on the ace because you see the gap between that hook point and that line tie really really good gap but i'll actually still take a pair of pliers put it right there on the base of that hook and just bend the hook up just a touch just to give it even more clearance so i didn't hurt the integrity of the hook didn't do much at all just gave that hook a little bit let me hold it straight just gave that hook a little bit more bite so whenever the fish gets it i know i'm gonna get that fish in you it's know i'm gonna land that fish how the fish are gonna bite because a lot of times people just manufacture these things and it's to be pretty yeah when it needs to be functional so you yeah. need to visualize how the bass is gonna bite let's face it like 50 percent of what these companies are trying to do is market to fishermen is to get them to buy it yeah the get store. people to buy it they don't really care what happens after you buy it there's only a handful of companies that take pride in actually what how their products perform all that type of stuff so like they just want you to buy the product and then not think about it anymore hopefully you catch some on it so you can buy another one but for the most part that's the thing that i just try to tell people is like don't get caught up in the small stuff that doesn't really matter but the line you use is very important that's your link to the fish the hooks you use are very important the way your baits are actually set up and the way they hook the fish very very important and then you know so don't be scared to tinker and yeah change. don't be scared to tinker like i get baits just because you buy them yeah. and they were twenty dollars you can change the way they look yeah i know twenty dollars twenty dollars expensive bait now yeah I, I can think of a lot of times where you have that dang jackhammer tied on and you don't even want to skip it under a dock because you're like Decent chance it ain't coming back out from under there, but, but you got to do it. It's better to change the twenty dollar bait and have a better hookup ratio. Yeah, tinker with tomorrow. it. Yep, that's right. And I mean, I was thinking about chatter baits whenever we <clears> mentioned <throat> that. Do you remember that chatter bait bite you got under that uh, that floating dock that one time, and it like blew up on it? Where at? I don't even know where we were at, but you like skipped it, so it was like a floating dock, and it was under the the walkway to the floating dock. Oh yeah, that was a Lake what Fork in a Shadspone. Yep. It, 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 you saw it on, on GoPro footage? No, I was in the boat. I don't know where that was. We were fishing a tournament. Oh, me and you were? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it was like Martin or you follow or something. I think it was you follow. May have been you follow. But it was like an insane. Was it a big one? Yeah, it was like three and a half, four. Yeah, that's pretty good one for there. I can't believe y'all remember that fish. I don't remember it. I don't know. I've seen too many swim jig bites in this, my life. This is what happened. I had been throwing it, throwing it, throwing it, and then you picked it up, skipped it over there. Remember, you you were trying to get the backlash out or something, and you just like threw it up there, and then the fish came up. I don't remember. I remember because yeah. I had been throwing it back there for like <laughs> three or four hours, and then yep. I handed it to you to fix it, and then you catch one. Yep. I just remember that fish. Well, I apologize for catching one of the bait you've been throwing. No, it was a cool bite. So another thing, guys, is off season been tinkering obviously i've been tying some skirts i've been putting some different colors together what kind of colors do y'all want to see in the untamed tackle jigs the ace the apex got something else cooking a little bit of something else cooking gonna be pretty cool but what kind of colors do y'all want to see in these baits you know anything that y'all really like can't live without you know that's what i kind of want to know and i've been hearing a lot of good reviews on the ace for almost two years now really really good stuff got any complaints with it let me know 
you know let me know if anything goes wrong whatever you can dm untamed tackle let them know but any kind of cool new colors y'all thinking about let us know because you know i'm not that creative i keep it simple if y'all have a color y'all can't live without maybe i need to try so i appreciate that but what else we got oh just rigged the boat up got mounts on it got half the graphs on it that are going to be on it because that stuff is back ordered got my engine all the way broken in and what else we got power poles on it I haven't been out there. It's like negative two degrees. Negative two. We got lithium batteries in it. We've got everything dialed in in the new boat. So it won't be long. It'll be boat walkthrough video. So that'll be really, really cool too. You know, it's always cool getting a new boat. I've got, you know, a few years in a row now got a new boat, but it's still really cool. Already, we've already posted videos on the boat. Couple sneak peeks. Couple little sneak peeks, but there's some cool new features on the boat this year that I really like. Make it more user friendly. You know, boats are going up. It costs a ridiculous amount, but it's always nice to see boat brands listen to the fishermen you know because there's certain little things throughout the day or throughout the year or the months or any time of year that it just makes a big difference you know and it's cool to see little changes that really really help so like that's awesome trim buttons. That's my favorite part. okay hunter likes the hunter likes the front trim buttons on my new boat because you can get them with your, with foot. your foot like they're big they're like that long that and wide at the bottom of the, the and you panel. can press them with your foot which has been i mean most of these boats have had a little toggle switch that's that long and that wide you got to hit it with your toe or bend down and pick it up or they got a little hole that you got to ring with your toe that's hard to or do it's at the top of the panel yeah or top of the panel or anywhere weird so this this is actually the best trim buttons i've ever seen on a boat as far as from the front if i start getting in shallow water i reach over my foot and trim it up almost never trim it down from the front like it's very rare that i trim it down from the front but i almost trim it up all the time because i'm dumb and like to go really shallow and really expensive brand new boats but that's where the fish are that's where i'm going kyle's also dumb because he has his shop and it's he's been rigging out in the cold yeah been rigging the boat out in the cold if only i had a garage that i could back the boat into maybe also, next year let us know any like small tips or tricks that y'all do to your baits yeah, if y'all got some, something cool that I need to try while, while I'm tinkering out here, let me know. What else we got over here we can talk about? Mm -hmm. That was all secret baits over there. I got a rod rack right there from 13 Fishing. Actual rod rack oh, holds a bunch of rods. I wanted you to show them how you make your bait keepers. Bait keepers? Yeah, with a line and a shrink rod. Or is that a secret? Oh, like a, like a flipping hook? Yeah, is that a secret? No, that's not a secret. We'll make one of those up. Might have to pause it though okay. because you gotta get this stuff. Yeah, I gotta get this stuff out. Alright. Got dug out my what is that? Nifty hook box. This is extra hooks. These go in the truck, not in the boat. This thing weighs like I don't know, Hunter, what do you think? 400, 500 pounds? Okay. At least 37. It's high it's it's heavy. Okay, obviously not 400 pounds, but it is very heavy. So I'm gonna show y'all one of the flipping hooks I've been using a lot. Still a couple small things that I don't like about this, but there is one major thing that I really like about it. And that is that I can dictate the actual length that the hook keeper is away from the line tie. And what that does is gives your bait a different angle on the hook. So sometimes you want your bait to be at a 45 degree angle down on the hook. Sometimes you want your bait to be extremely straight. And changing the actual height of the bait keeper on the shank of the hook changes that so leave me a comment if gamakatsu should let me make a flipping hook that's like this show it to them get it see if i can dig the hooks out so this ain't it this ain't it also got a thing to hold like bunches of line with i'm pretty happy with that actually because it makes it really easy for rig and have to rig a lot of rods for go to tournaments and that helps a ton Let's see what we got. Trying to find them, trying to find them. Here they are. All right. So I keep straight shank, round bend, worm hooks by the hundred. Tons of them. Just went dark on them. So this is a hook that I really like flipping. This is a fluorocarbon flipping hook. I don't flip braid on this. And I can close my hook box back up, set it off to the side. All right, there it is. There is the, let's see if I can get, get, get it in focus and not me. And then I've got this little shrink wrap thing. Actually, the first time I saw this um, was from Taku. 
who's sponsored by Rayugi. And I saw another pro, Jason Williamson, using it also. So slide this little shrink wrap up on the shank of the hook. And then you actually get you a handy dandy lighter. Keep it pretty simple. Get you a lighter. Shrink wrap it on down. Turn it, make sure it's the right angle. Get it how you want it on the hook. I press it together, it burns you just a little. It's all right, toughens you up. Toughens you up a little bit. And this has been one of my favorite flipping hooks all year, just like that. Sometimes I'll trim this little excess off a little bit too long after I push it together. But certain baits that have a very subtle action, like I flipped the 13 Fishing Invader a ton this year, that bait has a very subtle action and that bait does not perform well when it's at a 45 degree angle on the hook a regular style beaver bait whenever you're punching you want it to be at a 45 degree angle on the hook because when that fish bites it the hook is at a different angle and actually gets you a better hook set except especially whenever you're snelling it just gives you more leverage going through the bait through the roof of that fish mouth all that type of stuff when you're using thin soft plastic baits that is kind of the difference like the gap between the line tie and this I tie a snail knot in there a lot of times and then put the bait on there so that's something that I've been doing for less than two years for sure I would say probably a year and a half two years something like that so haven't been doing it for super long but really really a fan of this like super happy with this me have caught a lot of really really big ones on it you know it's just kind of a thing that I like to do just because I like the to tinker around with the way stuff falls and fall rate and the hooks and stuff so this is what i spend my time doing when i'm trying to figure out better ways to catch bass it's always something involving hooks and landing them i focus a lot on trying to land them not trying to get the bite because i feel like getting the bite is all about where you throw not what you throw you can't catch them if you ain't throwing in front of them so that's kind of the way that i feel about it spend your time figuring out how to land them and find them because that's the two most important things not get them to bite if you're around aggressive ones, they bite. No surprise there, is it, Hunter? Another big key. If you want to be better on the water, be organized. You know, like, be able to find the stuff you're looking for. You know, I keep all my hooks in little bags like that. I just, I've done this for a long, long time now. I actually got this idea years and years and years ago whenever I was ordering tungsten weights and the tungsten weights that I was ordering came individually in packs. In one pack like that had a, a tungsten weight. So obviously I'd order 35 tungsten weights at a time. I'd put all the halves in one, all three eighths in one, then I'd have 20 extra bags. So like, let's put my flipper hooks in there. And if I flip the hooks in there, then it kind of cascaded from there. So now we're pretty dang organized. This box is actually ready to start the season. Got everything in there that I need for at least the first two tournaments, probably the first four tournaments. Might have to make an adjustment after Seminole, because we got Okeechobee first, then Seminole. But this box is completely loaded up for those two for sure, and it might be loaded up even for a couple more, but I'm gonna have a break in the middle, a month long break in the middle, so we gotta revisit, reorganize, refigure out what we got going on. So, this right here, that's been what we've been playing with for the past little while. See if we can get that. Damikis, underspin, spoons, all that fun stuff on forward face sonar. I know some people don't like it, but in my line of work, you ain't gotta like it, but you gotta use it. You better use it anyways. So, organized and mess with the hooks, scale your baits down correctly, and you got something. So, I put my hook box back where my hook box goes. He can do that, but he can't put his clothes back in the laundry basket. See, I'm lucky. I wear the striker outfit, wear striker clothes, and I guess they're like magic. Because I just walk in the house, take them off, throw them on the floor, and like two days later, they're folded up back in my closet. So, shout out to Stryker for doing that, sending me the lucky clothes, the uh, whatever you want to call it. I guess they're lucky, blessed, whatever you want to call it. But I just throw them on the floor, and all of a sudden, they're hang, hung back up or folded back up. So, shout out to Stryker for that. I need like a patent on those types of clothes. What do you think, Hunter? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You like how they do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. I've never seen them do it. I've seen them do it. They just, they just appear back in the closet. Shout out to Stryker. All right, what else we got to talk about? 
Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy New Year's. Christmas make, just make came. Make sure your bait looks like the fish that they're eating. Make sure you match the hatch. Match yep. the hatch. That's right. That's all I got. That's all we got. Appreciate it, guys. About to load the boat up. Got a couple more rods to put in there, a couple baits. Got a whole stack of baits, actually, because the boat has nothing in it. Not a single hook in the entire boat. So, got me six of these G-boxes. And this is actually what my soft plastics are in right now, because I know where I'm going. Don't want to show you all the side too much, but I know where I'm going. So, this they'll fit in this box, and this box ain't full. So, that's all the stuff I've got put in the camus. See y'all.